Uh, let's talk about long projects. So long projects, um, we can. Uh, there's multiple ways to speed up long projects, and um, most of the time, uh, a long project. You know, if I have uh, ten miles of road I'm designing, do I try to do the corridor all in those ten miles? And I will say, well, it depends. If it doesn't have a lot of intersections. And if it doesn't uh, in your if, if it doesn't have, you know, um, ramps coming off of it and uh, you're not widening it or splitting it and going back and forth from like a, a two lane to a four lane divided or something like that. Uh, yeah, you, you could probably model that one uh, in the processing time be acceptable as long as you don't set your interval too small and you don't have a lot of clipping or you're also if you have a lot of point controls turn off the external control while you're designing um and sometimes you if it's straight and things like that uh the horizontal and vertical curves densification can be set to false even though it doesn't affect it if you if it's on a straight road but um you know if you have a urban setting where you have multiple driveways, multiple intersections, and you've got your density set down to one for your template interval and everything like that, you may see after a couple of miles that the processing time is getting to be an annoyance. And what you can do is you can break those up into two separate corridors and two separate DGNs and work on them separately. Uh, also, some of the things that can slow you down, if you're doing milling and overlay, if you're doing that for the whole corridor, uh, it does take processing time. So if you're milling and overlay in a project for 10 miles, uh, you may want to break that up uh, so it doesn't, uh, 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 doesn't have the processing time as long. So my recommendations are on long projects, break up into multiple corridors stored into separate files. You can even have multiple corridors in the same file and work on one so it's not processing the other one. Um, so you can have multiple corridors in one file if you would like. It's just you have to set it up that way. Um, break side roads, ramps, and other items not part of the main corridor in the separate files. Uh, for instance, if I'm designing a ramp in one file and I'm having it clip my secondary and main road corridors, I would still have that in a separate file because I can work on that ramp, get it the way I want to very quickly. The processing times are high. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, and then when I get, say, yeah, that's fine, I go open my mainline corridor. And if you have it clipping turned on, it'll clip it. Same way with the secondary file and it'll clip it uh, and it's one processing time for that. Um, and if you need to put all those corridors together, use a master corridor file to reference in all the corridors. I think that holds true for a lot of the different data, your terrains and geometries and super elevations and everything for that. And I'm still sharing here and I'll point that out right here. We've changed the icon on that. So if I go to my corridor objects here, uh, you can, t it's uh, the rule, ruler now is called deactivate rule and then apply it. It used to be a lock and an unlock. We changed the icon for some reason. I'm not aware of why, but uh, it's still there. So, so at the intersections where you remove the incantation was they're a separate corridor for that intersecting road. Uh, yes, uh, that is a separate corridor. It has its own geometry here, but I use this uh, Sybil cell in this area. You can see here, if I uh, highlight it here, it's from the edge of pavement of my main corridor uh, along the alignment uh, for the second one, so my secondary road there. And this template that I use is all I did was take out the shoulders and in conditions in that area. So, um, yes, it is a separate corridor. 
Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, uh, another one. Would you recommend doing a template drop and intersection instead of using point constraints to switch off the end condition? Um, that's kind of a, and it depends. That's going to be my official answer. I'm not going to say yes or no. If I'm only doing, it, it depends on the size corridor. If I'm in an area where, like an urban area where I am, have drives and intersections and everything like that all along my corridor and I've got five miles of it, I would probably do the template drop over the horizontal constraint, turning things on and off. And the reason why I say that is with doing that, you're not slowing down your template processing or your corridor processing with that. If I have one intersection or three intersections in two miles and I'm using that, uh, yeah, I would use horizontal constraints um, because I don't have to worry about it. If I need to come back and add more at later on, it works. And it ought, remember, it's your template drop interval that's also going to uh, do that. That's kind of uh, not do it, but uh, it also corresponds with that. Uh, because every template drop has to process that horizontal constraint. So, I hope that answered your question. Can you speak to priorities of constraints? Uh, yeah, this is actually documented, and I can't remember them right off the bat. I apologize for that. Uh, but I will say this. Point controls uh, are pretty much the... Uh, overrule everything else. For instance, if I put a parametric constraint on something for the width, and then I put a point control on, the point control is going to rule. It's going to override the parametric constraint. Um, there is a document out there. Uh, I don't have it handy, the, a link to it that explains which one and what order they're processed in. So I do know that uh, in point control, so a super elevation is a point control, uh, a form of a point control also, but you can override it with a normal point control, a horizontal or vertical point control or a vertical point control. So um, there is a hierarchy on those. And if I would can find that, uh, um, I'll try to drop it in if one of my guys on the line can do that. Okay, uh, let's see. I, I'm looking for some other questions here that I hadn't already answered. Uh, do, uh, here's a good question. Do I recommend uh, in-condition exceptions? And I will say yes, I do, because they're not searching and trying to figure out uh, – all along a corridor if you're using switches and stuff like that. Use an in-condition exception where you can take it off, take the in-condition off in a certain area, or you can change it out to something different instead of trying to build that into your template. So yes, I do recommend in-condition exceptions. Good question. I should have covered that a little bit more. Uh, so, uh, Let's see. Let's see. Get some other ones. Try to find some that would address everywhere. Uh, let's see. I uh, had one that says, what would you recommend to do when you have corridor with constraints, i.e. intersections in conditions? I think we've talked about that whole thing, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, I think I've gone through most of the questions here. Oh, got some more here. Um, uh, two, uh, here's one. Any comment on creating two corridors, one with a roadway template with, without any end conditions, back, a backbone corridor, and then another one for the end conditions? Yes, uh, I've seen that done quite a bit, especially when you get into interchanges, roundabouts, 
everything like that. Some people do it on the main line corridor. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and while you're working on one side of the end conditions, you're not reprocessing the backbone or the other side. And it can be faster for you. Um, just remember, if you process the main corridor, it's got to reprocess both in condition corridors because it's tied to those corridor objects. Um, and uh, also, you can use linear templates in some cases instead of using a corridor, which a linear template is kind of like a corridor. It just doesn't have, uh, it's kind of a lightweight corridor. So you could do that too. Um, one was, can you further explain how you constructed the T intersection that is a separate template? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, if I, uh, and if I, hopefully I'll have enough time, I'm going to delete this template drop and have my corridor reprocess here. And I'm going to delete this template drop. And before I do that, with speed things up, I am going to change my properties here for my corridor uh, feature definition and set my external controls to false. And that'll speed me up here while I'm trying to explain this. So so this is what I did. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just fixing my corridor for, and I'm gonna take this corridor object or this corridor. So this is how I originally built my corridor. I had a corridor from beginning to end and uh, what I'm doing here is uh, you can see here that the template drop runs through my intersection here. Well, if I look at this, uh, I've got a civil cell that I've placed here up against the edge of payment. And I want to clip the corridor out. One thing is that I can do is use clipping. But another thing is to prevent it from having to do all the clipping is I can go to my corridor highlight it and up here uh, I can do a template drop so I go to my hammer and I do take the second option create template drop and I'm going to use the same template so if you want to go to your template library I'm using the same template and I'm going to say snap it to that curve return snap it to this curve return and drop interval of one through my intersection. So as you can see here, what's going to happen here is it puts in a template drop, creates a new template drop. It's the same as the other two, the ones on either side. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this template drop here and edit it. And I'll just go through here and say, delete all these components and these points and that point and delete that one I forgot to say all so now when I say okay it's going to reprocess the corridor and the end conditions for this intersection are no longer there so I don't have to do clipping at this point I hope that explains it thanks for watching if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.